we're one week closer to Christmas. Oh, don't remind me. And I am not even remotely close to being done Christmas shopping. How about you guys? It's not good. No. So on this week's video, we did a 2013 lifestyle fifth wheel. And it was a little bit challenging. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of fabrication uh, in the basement. Um, lifestyle, very well built coach in this year. Let's check out this install right now. Okay, next up. A lifestyle 2013 LS 36 FW this is kind of the before they get down in the bay so um, this is the left hand wall in the basement steps are over that way um, goes at an angle. I don't think I'm going to be able to mess with it too much. I'm just going to have to go with what's here as far as space, but however, I will be able to recess things inside this wall. And um, there's also, uh, there's a water tank right here that comes up to about this high. Uh, this whole space up above here, I would have to frame it in, but the entire way across, except for about right here, is available uh, for, you know, recessing equipment, hiding things inside the wall. Uh, we're going with 400 amps of Battleborn Lithium. Uh, we're going with uh, 900 watts of solar on the roof. Uh, Multi plus 3000. Uh, the MPPT is a 150 slash 100. And uh, what else do we have? Uh, BMV 712 Smart. I think that's it. So I'm going to get started taking things apart. All right. So in the first part of the build is the tear out. So I just wanted to take a peek behind the wall and take uh, see, you know, uh, how much space we have to work with. Um, we really wanted to be on this side of the coach because uh, to balance out some weight issues that he had um, with his uh, load. So start measuring and planning and calculating and putting everything kind of uh, spatially. Uh, had to relocate the, the uh, central vac. Actually, the, I had to relocate the central vac twice. Um, the first part that you see here on this little shelf, that actually was the first place I moved it to, uh, right above the um, transfer switch. That actually didn't turn out quite as well as I wanted it to. Uh, needed a little bit more room to be able to get to the transfer switch, uh, especially if you had to get in there and work on anything. So even though it's in the right place right now, it, you know, is great in theory, but in practicality, it just wouldn't work out. So I ended up moving it higher. Um, trying a couple of different orientations with the batteries, uh, facing, you know, facing each other, then facing forward. And then I ended up with a staggered pattern so that it was easy to do the, uh, complete wiring on it. Um, at this point I'm trying to put in or I'm putting in some bracing so that during travels they uh, won't be moving all around I was using aluminum one inch L bracket uh, you can get it at any hardware store the way that I was arranging the bracket was on the bottom of the shelf so that the batteries wouldn't move forward, backward, side to side, and obviously they had a shelf on top so they wouldn't uh, bounce around too much. Um, getting everything lined up perfectly was a little challenging. Next, we're planning on where the MultiPlus will go. I wanted it to be mounted as high as I could get it so that I would have room underneath it to run a lot of the wiring. I recessed it in the space so that it would come flush out to the front. A lot of the challenges with the MultiPlus is despite its size, it is 9 inches deep, 10 inches wide, and 14 inches tall. 
then that little thing weighs about 40 pounds. So whenever you're doing a build out and you're putting one in, you've really got to make sure that all your framing is very sturdy. It's secured on multiple points. So on the parts list of this, I, when I opened, I said that he had a 150 slash 100 MPPT. Actually, that wasn't the case. He had a 100 slash 50. I didn't realize that that was the one that he had gone with. And while I was in town uh, on a couple of other installs before he before I got to his, he ended up upgrading and went with more solar, more battery, and because of that, he actually had to buy a second MPPT to handle the amount of solar that he wanted to go with, which ultimately ended up being um, 1,200 watts. I also, when I wired his coach, I wired it for, for up to 2,400 watts. So he has an extra set of wiring coming down so that he can expand his... Um, uh, his solar on the roof. Now just trying to button up all of the wiring, getting everything kind of put into place. You can see the panel that I put in that has the shutoffs and fuses and uh, circuit breaker on it. This is the point where I realized that having that shelf so close to the uh, transfer switch just wasn't going to work out so I ended up tearing it all out and raising it up making it higher once I get all the batteries wired the next thing to do is to start putting in um, the automation and getting the interrupt so the, to insert the multi-plus wiring uh, in between the transfer switch and the main uh, breaker panel. I had to undo some of the battery wiring uh, to get everything wired up through into the back of that uh, shutoff panel with all the breakers and switches and stuff on it. to make out the rest of the cables to get everything all connected. I make all my cables custom length uh, so that everything is, is more precise and you know cut the length that way so that all the cables are exactly the right size that I use um, two aught going to uh, in between all the batteries uh, if the batteries are very far from the multi plus then I have to go up in the gauge of wire to connect the coach wiring the 12 volt wiring over to the um, multi plus the, the new power source for for your your DC power uh, had to run a two gauge wire to connect over into the existing fuse blocks the lifestyle actually does it a little bit differently inside the coach the breaker panel was only just a breaker panel the actual DC connections are all here in the front bay. I had to rewire everything because now the batteries are no longer up in the front. They are uh, all 
underneath the multiplus. So I had to switch the, the way everything connects. Once I got all that reconfigured and put back together, and by the way, this was one of the most comfortable large bays that I've been in. There was all kinds of room. I was actually up on my knees and still had room above my head. So this is the the second MPPT showed up a little bit later in the install. So I'm just getting it connected and wired and put in place. Getting the box, the uh, combiner box all connected. His roof was so clean and had such very few things on the roof. I could have gotten eight 300 watt panels uh, up on the roof. And then I got some help from somebody that has a fear of heights. So. You're good. This is the first roof that she was ever up on to help me with. Um, that first bit you saw, I was, uh, he only had three panels there at that time. I went ahead and wired and put the brackets on the roof for the fourth panel, which will be arriving later. Just getting everything wired up. Uh, we. The owner wanted to go with a little bit different configuration. He's not going to go full 2400 watts on the roof, but uh, he does want to expand it later on. So this is the final walkthrough. There's all the brackets for the next roof, uh, the next panel. All he has to do is plug in on that uh, combiner. These are the final pictures. Um, you know, everything was behind a, a fake wall. Um, put some hinges on it and made it a door to open up. Thanks for joining us again on another install and we have many more coming your way. We're so thankful and blessed to continue to share our journey with you. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do. Mike is a mobile RV solar installer. We traveled the country doing this and we look forward to meeting you guys in the future. Follow us on Instagram and like this video. I'm sorry. Smash the like button. That's his part. He likes to say that. Almost done. Oh, oh, we get his stitches out. Um, Sunday or Monday, something like that. Well, probably Monday. He's he's actually doing really well with it, and that video will actually be next week. Yeah. 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 So yeah. next week you might experience a little deja vu. <laughs> We've done the exact same rig twice now, and um, and it's rare. It's a rare coat, so it's it's pretty exciting. Mike did some different the orientation. Some some things ended up being a little different in the in the second version, round two. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So stay tuned for that next week. We'll see you guys on the road. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Now I'm supposed to say, are you ready for Christmas yet? Now we're going to say, hi guys. Three, two, Thanks. one. Hi guys. Okay. Oh, we're All right. Good. Ready? It's just you. Why do I have to be ready? <laughs> we're, um, we're filming this at 9 p.m. at night, so honey is a bit tired. I'm done. 
we won't tell you via video because we're not we don't like to bad mouth any specific manufacturer but if you ever catch us on a margarita night at a Mexican restaurant and you happen to ask us which manufacturer we're not going to buy, we will definitely tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's actually a couple that we won't buy. Yeah. But one... Lucy, get down. Come here. Come on. Don't put your head in the <laughs> armpit. You little turd. Thank you all very much. If you have... Smash the like button. Oh, okay. Chill out with that. Oh my gosh. And we'll Smash see you guys the like on. Button. Oh, okay. We've already said that. <laughs>